Greetings, my favorite topographers, and welcome to Professional Photography Tips. My name is Josh Cripps, and you can find me on Instagram and Facebook at Joshua Cripps Photography. Now, the world is often a very colorful place, except when it's not. Like, in this photo, for example, I was out in a place called the Pioneer Basin, so geared up for a rock and roaring sunset, and what happened? Well, it never really blew up. But... The clouds did get a huge amount of texture in them, which, with their lack of color, sort of means, you know what, this could be a good candidate to turn into a black and white. Now, Photoshop has some built-in tools for black and white, but I don't think they work that well. Or you can buy an aftermarket plug-in, and those work really well, but then you got to spend more money. So in this video, I want to show you a really easy, cool technique that you can use that uses basic adjustment layers along with some blending modes to give you a really neat tunable method for making black and whites. So let's dive into it right away. First thing I'm gonna do is just add a hue saturation layer and desaturate it. Boom, hey, we're done, cool. Ha ha, no, I'm just kidding. So this is all well and good, but you know, it's, it's just desaturated. It's not really, I didn't really tell Photoshop which parts I wanted to be brighter and which parts I wanted to be darker. It just took away the color information. So the way that you can tell Photoshop the bits that you want to be brighter and darker is by adding another hue saturation layer. This one we're going to actually pull underneath that first one and we're going to change the blending mode down to luminosity. Now what happens here let me turn off the desaturated one. You can see what's going on. So what luminosity blend mode does is basically tells Photoshop if I, whatever adjustments I make on this layer, don't change anything except the brightness of the pixels. So don't change the color, don't change the saturation, don't change the hue. Now you see I've still got a hue slider in that adjustment layer. So what happens when I slide this around is Photoshop tries to change the hue, but it can't. It can only change the luminosity. So you see as I do this, the various brightness values of the pixels change throughout the image. Which means that when I turn back on my desaturation layer, as I slide that hue around, it'll actually change the relative brightness of the pixels in the photo. How sweet is that? So now you have an opportunity to basically tell Photoshop what you want to be brighter and what you want to be darker here in your black and white. And what I recommend you do is you just slide this thing around until you get something that tickles your fancy. Now, you may find that what looks best for somewhere like the sky doesn't look best for the foreground and vice versa. So you can always do this in parts. And that's what, exactly what we're gonna do here. I'm gonna look at the foreground first and slide this around until I get something that I like. And I kind of like it when that grass gets super dark to contrast with the lighter stream. So I think something like that, to me, looks really nice. Now, I'm gonna combine these two layers into a group by hitting Control or Command G, and then I'm gonna add a layer mask to them, and using the gradient tool, I'm just gonna blend out the sky there. Okay, so now that adjustment is only being applied to my foreground and my sky is back to being colored. All we gotta do is the same process. We'll add two more of those hue saturation layers, just like that. The top one will desaturate completely, and the bottom one will change the blending mode to luminosity. Now, we don't have to worry about this one changing the appearance, the appearance of our foreground adjustments because the hue adjustments that we make are only going to affect colored parts of the image. And since the underlying layers are already desaturated, they're not colored, they're not going to be affected. So now I can slide this around just to change the sky and how I want it to look. And I'm just going to slide this to a point where I get sort of maximum contrast between the clouds, the mountains, and the details in the mountains. So you may find you might not have to make a big adjustment at all and maybe right about in there, just a small adjustment in this case, actually looks fine. It brought out the details here and in the clouds and the things like that. I'm also gonna group those together as a group. Great. So now we've got these two adjustments done to our image, and now all we have to do is fine tune it a little bit. Say we want a little more contrast there in the sky. Let's bring up a curves adjustment layer, grab the targeted adjustment tool, and we'll just drag down on some of the shadowy parts and then drag up on some of the highlight parts. And this will help bring in a lot of rich 
drama to the sky. Now I don't want that curves adjustment to be applied to the whole image, so I'm just going to grab another gradient here and blend out the foreground. And at this point, if I wanted to, I could go down into my foreground group here and add a curves adjustment there to emphasize the contrast here in the foreground. So I want the stream to be a bit brighter and that grass to be a little bit darker. Something like that. Yeah, now we've got a very powerful, dramatic black and white image that was really tunable. And you can always go back and change this. If you don't want it to be, you want those grasses to be a little bit brighter, just pull that one in a little bit. Super easy, really tunable, powerful method. And that's all there is to it. Easy black and white here in Photoshop. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please subscribe to this channel and share the video with your friends. You can also join my newsletter for more photo tips and techniques. And you might also find this video interesting. Until next time, have fun and happy shooting.